it's looking at every opportunity to reconfirm our commitment to the client. It's that responsiveness, the level of detail, and the continuity. It's a critical component of what we do. Welcome back to the Irish Pod Sofa. Delighted to be joined today by William Carson. Wonderful to be here, Tom. Thank you. Customer Engagement Director. Is that? Director of Market Engagement. Director of Market Engagement at yeah, Ascensos. Our friends, right. Ascensos. Your friends, your partners. Our partners. Your advocates. Yes. Yes, that's right. All of the above. How yeah. are you doing? Very, very good. Very, very good. Yeah, yeah. really enjoying this year. How, how's, well, it's been a big year for you. It's been a big year for us. And um, although there's talk of recession, there's talk of all the others, there was the same talk a year ago. None of it's actually come to light in the way people thought it might. Obviously, there's been other economic woes that have been of concern, both for our clients, for our prospects, and for the, the wider economy and industry. But we seem as a as a country, but also as a, a, an industry, to consistently surprise ourselves in terms of growth and expansion. So, yeah, it's been a very good year. I think so. We were talking about uh, this with Neris as well, that... I said, what's your kind of prediction for 2024 that might yeah. surprise people? And she said, actually, I think we might see a bit more of an economic upturn rather than the doom and gloom. And I actually think the same. I think maybe a couple of quarters sooner we're going to start to see some growth out of it. It's a bit it's a bit frustrating that it kind of just trundles along without really dipping into a recession, and but also not really gets like a bit stagnant, isn't it? You're right. And, and I think one of the worst elements is the media's approach to reporting on it so yeah, they kind of capitalized on the uh the doom headlines and it's been the same really i think over the last number of years we've seen that growth in negativity because yeah. it attracts eyeballs etc so you're getting very little other than places like the financial times where you can really get some sense of what's really happening um there there is always the a hundred days of snow headline, as I always say, from the Daily Express, which never arrives. And it's a bit like this problem with the economy actually never arrives. But people are kind of talked into a holding back. And mm. particularly in our industry, we're starting to hear from, from lots of organizations, you know, the big four consultancies, that organizations that they would expect to come forward for large transformation pieces are now sitting back and saying, actually, can you fix something quickly for us? Mm. Um, now, we're not seeing that so much. We are seeing other organizations still say, look, we're on a trajectory which we want to follow through with and we want you to partner with us to achieve that. But certainly the noise and the mood music is the bigger players that you would expect to come forward with the, the large pieces. There's less of them at this time of year anyway. But hopefully, as you say, going into next year, people will take a little more stoicism and say, actually, let's go with what we're actually seeing in the data the customer behaviors, their spending behaviors, rather than just assume it's it's all doom and gloom. Yeah. Uh, one of the key topics that I want to talk about in this episode for this series that we're doing on yeah. CX24 Trends is about brand. Yeah. And you guys have um, have got one of, probably one of my favorite brands, actually. Yeah. Um, you know, always, like, as long as I can remember in life, find myself going to John Lewis. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what's the process of a company like a Sensos? Reveal it a little bit in terms of how do you go about even winning, you know, such a such a prestigious brand as part of your portfolio? There's a lot to it. There's the clear procurement uh, work stream, as you might call it, that guides you along the, the path of engagement with the clients. Um, like many of these major procurements, there are uh, third parties involved that are guiding the client themselves um, out of a sense of governance, which is which is great actually. And for us, though, it's looking at every opportunity to reconfirm our commitment to the client. Uh, and it's approach we would take with every client, to be honest. It's it's never assuming that the document that they've received or the information that we sent on an email is good enough or uh, is just on time. It's that responsiveness, the level of detail and the continuity. I used the phrase just before we came on the podcast, 
that constant conversation, which can take many forms. It can be as simple as being in an event like this and meeting the clients. Uh, it can be at smaller events where they're really, they are actually looking for information and uh, knowledge from the wider industry and always being accessible. I think that's the other thing, being accessible and being the yes guys, not yes just for the sake of it, but yes for, of course, we can have a conversation. And then likewise, it's for us to look at those opportunities where we can have dialogue, meaningful dialogue with them and, and never assuming that a relationship, good as it can be, is the, the be all and end all. It's and, and we have good relationships with a lot of the retail clients that we've either worked with or been colleagues or friends of for, for many, many years. But that means nothing if you're not able to demonstrate and be scored then against your evidence that you're actually the right client for them. And I guess for your brand, for the Ascensos brand, the hard work you've done over many years to win yeah. those other retail clients and other you know, very recognizable brands deliver on your promises, yep. exceed those promises, deliver an incredible um, service, and we'll talk about some of the kind of premium nature mm. as we did on the panel in a little while, must count in droves as you then go and win the next big brand in your portfolio. Yeah, absolutely. I think when you sit with a new potential client and you do the big reveal once you've got through the NDA stage and they have a look at who we actually support and how varied the scope and scale of those supports are. Mm. No one retail client is the same. Um, they all have different transformational journeys that they've already started or they've started once they've come into our orbit of influence. And put it absolutely, by being niche in e-commerce and retail, it makes a significant difference to the conversation because they immediately know you're speaking their language uh, the language of seasonality, the language of peak, the language of the challenging dynamic that is unique to the retail space. We talked yesterday on the panel. Thanks again for, for joining us with, great, um, with Debbie from, from Greenwich and, and Marco from SSCL. Um, and we were talking about, like, I need to prepare myself for the word, the premiumization well done. <laughs> um, of audio in, in CX. Yeah. And... Um, Neris and I were debating yesterday as to whether that's a real word or made up. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to ask McKinsey. Yeah, we'll ask McKinsey. So obviously McKinsey coined that that phrase. And yeah. I guess in this world of automation and bots and all of these mm. sorts of things, the voice, the human to human conversation still has a place and probably no more place that it's uh, that it's more relevant for than, than brands. Yeah, I absolutely agree. The voice of the person that ultimately engages with that consumer who's clearly got through maybe a digital touch point that hasn't delivered what they needed is absolutely critical to how the brand will be perceived. Uh, and if that is a person who's a real advocate of that particular brand, you're immediately dealing with an asset to your organization as a company. And therefore you're also at risk, if you haven't got the right people having those conversations, voice conversations, you're at risk of devaluing advocates. Advocates very quickly can swipe left or right on their phones, and very quickly, particularly in retail, they're onto another brand that's delivering something similar. So for us, it's a critical component of what we do. I would expect that going into 2024 and beyond, to McKinsey's point in their report, the voice and the use of voice will become even more clear as, as the premium channel. I wouldn't even be surprised that in years to come, a bit like, you know, in YouTube, you can pay for a, a version of YouTube that has no ads. Arguably, in the future, there will be some brands out there looking at, you can pay a membership subscription that gets you the voice versus the digital experience. I think... I wondered if you were going to bring that up. I think it's absolutely a great insight. You know, you kind of see it in, not exactly as a subscription, but I think about, you know, my hotels.com account. Um, I'm gold tier because I obviously stay in too many hotels. And uh, <laughs> part of that is a dedicated voice customer service. Yeah. 
which you only get if you're gold. You silver, you get email and a chat bar or whatever. Uh, but yeah, I think I, I actually think you're right. I think people and I think people would pay for it as well. Yeah, I think they would pay for that security of going. I'm actually going to be able to speak to someone. Yeah. If I go back to when I joined First Direct, for example, which was now 32 years ago, um, it was just amazing. You just picked up the phone, somebody answered within three rings. These days, that doesn't happen with First Direct anymore, uh, which is disappointing. And they have the same messaging saying, due to large volumes, la, 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 which is always a surprise because they started as a call center uh, with a bank at the center of it rather than a bank with a call center at the center of it. Likewise, when Next directly launched, my God, 1988, you would just phone up till 10 o'clock at night. And we've kind of forgotten, in, in some ways, the entrepreneurial aspect of the customer management, remote customer contact center as a asset and a particular value stream to the business. It's been a call center for so long that people have forgotten the value of voice and therefore, do you know what? Let's charge properly for it. Let's recruit properly for it. Let's train properly for it. Let's professionalize properly for it. And all those things have drifted over the last 20 odd years, which is a real shame. But I could see that, yeah, absolutely. If you're a gold standard customer and you want a sort of a concierge curated experience as a customer, there's loads of us out there would pay instead of seven ninety nine for Amazon Prime. You mean I could pay seven ninety nine for my bank or my uh, favorite retail brand and actually have a customer person answering that's real and understands the brand, understands that's wonderful. Let's do it. Mm. Yeah, it's it's not. It's probably a bit of a race to the bottom, and maybe we're going out of that again to yeah. to think about you know how AI. I liked again the comments yesterday. I think Marco made the point about the complementary nature of AI in terms of automation um, and AGI in terms of generative conversations potentially as a uh, as a part of the puzzle, not a replacement for the human being when the conversation needs to you know, yeah. be handled in a slightly more sensitive or, or more direct fashion. Yeah, and, and I think the worst thing in my view, and it is just my opinion about the AI it's kind of become what Spotify was to the iPod. It's kind of collapsed the conversations completely mm. um, into two letters, A and I. Um, and the, the, the shame with that is, and I was at a, an event just yesterday morning before Expo, and all the things they were talking about were things we have been talking about for about 20 years. And have been doing in some places mm. for 20 years. Companies like Autonomy that eventually got bought out by um, HP, uh, OpenText. There was all these wonderful businesses when I came into this industry that were doing a lot of this stuff. But now it's all sort of concatenated up to be called AI. And, and that's a bit of a challenge because everyone's forgotten that they already have a duty of care to the data, to the intelligent automation that they already have inside their business to use it effectively. Yeah. In terms of the uh, the contact center and brands, yeah, I mean, really, those people are the last line of defense for your brand in in many instances. How do we make sure that you know, from a, I know you guys put a lot of energy into the training and the recruitment mm. and the you know coaching of your staff. Where do you see brands going wrong a little bit with this customer service element, which then lets their brand down? They've done so much hard work to build share in the market and a brand, you know, that they feel proud of. And then when you actually get to speak to them, it all kind of crumbles away. I think the challenge for a lot of brands is if you think about the investment in a marketing budget for a major brand, it'll be huge. Yeah. If you think then of the budget in the sales component of that element of that business for the brand it'll be huge so there is a kind of established model that we will budget to attract and then we'll budget to make the sale but we'll never budget to do the service and the care outside of thinking it is a 
a cost which you must always try and manage downwards. And that that's part of the problem. So I remember a great conversation with um, one of the top guys at one of the brands that we look after. And they were saying that actually we do a lot of social for a lot of the brands. And they'd got into their uh, HQ and someone was saying, oh, by the way, that, that social comment the other day was fantastic. It lit up Twitter or X as it now is. Uh, that was amazing. Who came up with that in marketing? And the guy had to say, actually, that, w that wasn't marketing. That was the outsourcer who, who done doing all of that content and getting all those views for us. It was just the assumption it was marketing. And another element that jumps out, coming back to how do we try and have a wider uh, approach to all of this, if you looked at something like uh, the Fashion Retail Academy, you know, I look at a lot of the courses that they teach, and they teach a lot about how to market in fashion, how to sell in fashion. Again, there's no, where, where's, you turn the page, where's the one about how to do customer care effectively in fashion retail? These things aren't taught, they're ex they're the last, you're right, the last line of defense. But as I say, and I've said to myself, I said, from now on, I won't use that phrase front line because we're seeing our people are like in a war zone, yeah. you know, which yeah. is really unfair because then you're not training them to be effective brand advocates for the people we represent. And then you're not selecting the right people to be effective brand advocates. And I think it has to roll all the way back down the hill again to how do we think of the contact center and should it rather be a value center as i often say it should be the value seen as the value in the chain not the end of the value chain i think it's i think it's very wise and yeah i like the frontline battlefield yeah it's not it yeah. can be a it can be a a, a relationship it should yeah. be a relationship yeah um tell us a little bit about for those that are just listening on the on the podcast and not watching the kind of youtube one of this you won't be able to see this but you've got some of your agents yeah. are here, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, um, for Space NK. Yeah, well, well, as you know, it was a great idea which we managed to do with you guys at Iris last year for uh, you uh, for the first expo. And I've always had this dream of being at the Call and call Contact Center Expo. Wouldn't it be great to have agents actually handling live conversations? Uh, there's no better way to prove the facilitation of what an agent can do. Uh, but it was with Iris that this actually came to, to fruition last year with Monsoon. Uh, and then again this year with Space NK. And obviously the key component there is proving the, the efficacy of the Iris audio technology clarity product, which has allowed our guys to zone out from all the noise in this conference hall, which as we know from doing the panel can be quite intimidating but they're having no problems today handling customer contact for Space NK. It is great. And it's always great also for, for us to see and remind ourselves what we're actually serving. Yeah. Right? Because I think um, you know, we, we quite often have a lot of our tech team go and do client visits. Yeah. And not just salespeople and not just sales engineers, pre-sales, but the actual tech, tech side. And I think it's such a fundamental reminder of, what it is that we're serving yeah. what's the role what does it entail um i think it's the same for any company maybe at a c level and management level to actually go into their organization and themselves and figure out what's going on there have a look at it for themselves I, I, that's a great point because uh if you think about the ceos of the brands that we support you often think i have great people in our business that speak to thousands if not tens of thousands of that CEO's customers every year probably 999,000 more than they might do on a regular basis um, and that is nothing to be uh, surprised about because the nature of the C-suite in the retail brand has a very clear um, focus which is, is quite right but sometimes you do want to say guys come and listen to the kind of conversations that your customers are actually having uh, and that could be voice or non-voice but it's great when they can come and sit beside an advisor on one of our floors at the loss and really listen to to hear whether it's you know one of our big DIY clients or one of our fashion or whatever and, and really get a sense of what concerns customers what do they love so it's not just all in reports and dashboards and pie charts 
We uh, we put them in the most intense environment here because yeah. we managed to occupy the space right next to the Kino Theatre. So it's been yeah, it's been quite intense and like you say, intimidating actually potentially yeah. because yeah. you know, and I guess that's not a completely uncommon environment for the contact centre. It's busy, it's energised, it's got loads of little conversations yeah. going on around, and being able to focus in and really perform is. It's probably quite a skill, actually, for an agent. It is, and obviously, it's one you 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 attract and uh, try to attract individuals that have that capacity and aptitude for being able to manage themselves in that way. But I think the 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 real world today is there are so many more people through diversity and inclusion programs that can have really rewarding careers in our industry. That things like Iris and and this came up in the panel yesterday. Uh, with the the clarity product, it is allowing people that maybe do have a, a challenge around noise and w whether it's noise from any direction, working from home or working in the contact center, can now have this capacity to say, actually, when I zone in on what the customer is saying, because they can hear them so clearly and the customer can hear them, you can see that they're actually getting far more from far more rewarding uh, time doing their job fulfilling their role absolutely um we're running out of time which is a shame but um we're going into the rapid fire round that we're doing with everybody oh right on, okay as part of this series um and i'm going to remind myself of the questions well the first one what's the big prediction in 2024 what's the tech that's going to emerge or the big trend that's going to come to fruition in 2024 specific to our industry i think it will be the advisor side use of artificial intelligence products and platforms. I think that's, I think we're sliding down the other side of the, uh, the, what's that, the hyperbole? Yeah. You know, the, and we're heading towards the trough of disillusionment, probably about March, um, for all the right reasons, because it is now no longer a discussion point around, will it work? Of course it works. It's, have you got the capacity, appetite, and right people inside your organization to make it as effective as possible? And what do you think the um, what do you think the thing that's been kind of hyped up that's going to disappear, or what's your wish for the thing that is just going to disappear off of our plate because it's just been overhyped? Yeah, I think that that's the ChatGPT as we know it. I, I actually did a, a blog earlier this year called Degenerative AI and ChatGPH, <laughs> um, just to show that if you don't understand what these things are doing in your business, you could be you know damaging and causing. Uh, damage inside your organization so i'd like to see that kind of become a real benchmark rather than let's all try it yeah agreed and uh left field random prediction um of any kind kind of like the david cameron return to frontline politics left field no one could see that coming what's what's william carson we're going to sit and talk again in a year's time yeah. obviously i would expect in the uk we will have a Labour government when we sit here this time next year. I would expect that we very potentially will have uh, a return of Captain Orangutan uh, <laughs> in, in a Western nation that we are all affiliated with in one way or another. I think that that's the two things that yeah. I think we need to be on the lookout for. And, uh, and the last one, William, which we've been asking everybody, tell us something random about you. Tell I us. will have an album out oh, yes. in March uh, as Strange Gravity, which is the electronic stuff. I was chatting to Rob, one of the founders at Iris about. Uh, that's due out, I think, March 1st on Spotify and all leading platforms. So you can be on our podcast series on Spotify and with the new album, yeah. which which I imagine will probably get more downloads and listens than, uh, I would than the podcast. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. No, great talk. Thanks so always. much. Always good. And thanks to you for listening. Hopefully you found William insightful. I'm sure you will have in this whole series. And we'll be back for some more episodes in this special CX24 prediction series. See you soon. You know, our model is about creating an environment where we have engaged, happy staff. There's a real opportunity to take our industry and the BPO business and spread it across the world.
contact center and customer experience um, absolutely is a career.